Today we have with us Mr. Bharatwaj Ramanathan, Director, Cap Germany. We welcome you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, while uh, developing a team from a uh, group of diverse people, how to make them a united team of people? So what are the challenges faced? The challenges uh, faced would be there if you don't assimilate properly in the first step. So sometimes we have had teams where we started on a differential note, uh, but we become a great team later on. And sometimes these differences, if they're not patched up in the early stages, then they continue to remain in that kind of interference with the project as it's going on. So it's very important to build a very strong team when you go into a new organization. If you're joining uh, into an established team, let us say you're joining a company and they have an established team, if you're the newcomer, um, I think you should put all the efforts in trying to understand who is the decision maker, who is the influencer, the group and uh, you, know, if you, you have to use an established methodology within that team, uh, uh, what is what, what is dynamics in the team, understand those dynamics and then you start making your contributions. Uh, maybe they will not encourage a sudden incursion, they may not be open to an idea uh, or maybe they are open to an idea. First you have to study them for a little while if you are going to be the newcomer. But if I am a, a person and I am putting together a team uh, for a, a project which I am doing, uh, the key things which I have taken to, uh, what do you call it as, uh, the key things which I have considered where I make the team is, I will see that each of them brings something different onto the table. Okay? Uh, if I put two experts on a project and the same thing, uh, maybe there will be difference of opinions and I had one project like that where uh, there was two possible solutions. One solution was to build on what we had, the other solution was to replace what we had with a new buy solution. So both of them were being experts and both of them were very passionate about uh, what they were suggesting. So it was kind of difficult for me to make that call at that point of time because both of them were really good experts. So at that point of time I said we will use the build Till this time, it is able to sustain. If it, is, if it breaks, then we will go ahead and buy. So, it was kind of a compromising decision at that point of time to make it sure, but it, it, I was not given one clear choice. So, since that time, I have made a decision that there should be strong players in different areas which makes the team work seamlessly. And you know what? Because they will try to learn if I am very good at managing something. Somebody will try to learn that from me and if there is there some, somebody is very good in communication or project management, I try to learn something from them. So I try to put together as diverse team as possible when I am trying to do a new project. But make sure that everybody has strengths. The most important thing is I make sure that everybody has uh, the skin in the game. That means uh, the rewards, recognitions are tied into the project and that's how I ensure the success in my dreams. Sir, uh, today's organization fa uh, faces other challenges that is keeping up with the ever changing technology. So, how do organizations go about uh, keeping them updated? Um, see, when organizations, when techno new technology keeps coming, uh, organizations are not uh, like dumping their old technology and going to new technology. Uh, uh, if you take large software projects which have been taken up by a lot of companies, they have made significant investments uh, for them to be able to not drop this big product. Um, there are still companies which run on ERPs like Oracle uh, and other legacy systems which are interfacing into uh, a better ERP like the security. Uh, but they are not abandoning their old systems. So the way companies keep, uh, what do you call it as, in abreast with technology is they are understanding new technology as it comes in and the usability of it. And they are not going to go in for replacement because something is new. You know, it's not like individuals, you know, when an iPhone 7 is coming, they're replacing their eyes. That's not possible in an industrial system. Whereas you need systems to run daily basis to do business as usual. Uh, so adaption rate is pretty good uh, as a reference to technology because all these companies have a long pathway to catch up on technology. And they don't catch up unless and until they feel the current one is neither scalable or is having too many hindrances in the new way of doing business. Uh, so usually companies will not adapt technology chain unless they see value in it. And uh, the, the value proposition for them would be 
with the current systems they have or the current technologies they are have, they are not able to meet the customer needs or the current technology is so cumbersome that the ease of doing business is going away. And that's when people move on to a newer technology. Traditional industries will take time to move on and move this thing. Uh, the nimble adapters in this are the current uh, crop of companies which are moved from the e-commerce e world or tech startups because uh, they have quicker cycle times and they want to change because they want to enhance the customer experience uh, when I'm sure all of you know uh, when companies like Amazon Flipkart the only way previously to do business was, was to do through an internet connection sitting at a home on a laptop or a PC but today you can do it on a smartphone right so that technology change they have adapted and uh, some of them actually have even gone back and said you can no longer do business with us on a fixed time, you can only do it on app. So they are, they are getting ready for the next generation. So the adaptability is faster with the new world companies, it's a little slower with the old world companies. Like for instance, uh, Bajaj has been making motorcycles. So they cannot change their motorcycle line overnight because they have set up a production facility to a large extent. So they may make some aesthetic changes on their bikes but the production line per se would remain more or less the same. So that's why the technology adoption in the old age companies is a little lower than the new crop companies. Sir, talking about startups with Make in India, still in India there are a lot of startups coming up. But uh, a recent report, a recent report suggested that uh, in the first quarter there was 24 percent decline in the venture capitalist funding. So how should startups go uh, brace themselves with this trend? Uh, I don't know whether startups should brace up or whatever it is because I think it's all driven by idea. Uh, it's, it's, it's the whole concept of startups are being driven by an idea, and you know what? That idea, whatever is there, should have a customer need behind it. And the need should be in such an area where it's growing and it needs to be fulfilled. For a startup, a startup to be successful, uh, it is that you have a unique innovative way of doing stuff which the customer needs and that customer needs of today are continuing to grow at an exponential rate. Then is when a startup will become truly successful. Okay? Otherwise, uh, you, you may have a great idea but you should have ready customers for it. And uh, uh, like uh, my good friend Nikhil like was saying, uh, you know, you, you, they, you want to sell uh, 5 lakh rupee diamond jewelry online. But uh, is the market ready for it? Is the Indian market ready for it? And how many people actually buy a 5 lakh rupee jewelry uh, normally, go to store and buy it? So there's a population for that. How many of them would actually trust, look at the photo on a site or a phone and buy that? The second thing. The third thing is the logistical element of how do you ensure quality, quantity, delivery, security of all these things, right? So just having an idea will not make a startup so a lot of people have ideas and a lot of people seem to have the same ideas and uh, so they are, they are competing for funding and those good ideas which are addressing the customer needs are the only ones which are actually going to stay for a long run and win more funding in the long run. Even if they burn money now, they will become profitable at some point of time. Uh, hence, uh, don't go by the statistical number if somebody is really keen to actually pursue a startup. The idea is that they should have the right path carved out for it. Uh, sometimes it takes years to get to the right kind of uh, approach. I'm sure when uh, Wilbur Wright and all will write where right, cycle shop owners and they had an ambition to fly an aircraft it took them quite some time to get the first aircraft and the first aircraft to fly you had to sleep and fly you had to fly down fly not by sitting but by sleeping and it's an evolution so if you have a good idea it has a, a business sense behind it it will definitely be successful. Sir, what are the it's a very hard uh, question, I think. It's a very difficult question. There is no one road for success. Uh, in my experience, what I found is uh, it's all about the tenacity, the holding on activity, the, the hard work combined with intuition, building networks. Uh, if you're very intelligent and you're not dealing people, with people correctly, uh, that can become a detriment in uh, growth as well. So it's a 
combination of many things. Uh, at the same time, uh, none of, I can't say that these four are important, these, these two are less important. All are important in their own way and they take significant, uh, what do you call it, as roles as you progress. The first thing when people are starting their careers in, as students now, some of you are fresher, some of you are experiences. Uh, when you get your get into your first job after placement is to make sure that you understand what you are expected to do and you do it perfectly. I was just having one of the conversations is don't ever do a good job. Okay, the reason for that is good is the enemy of the great. Always do a great job. So when, when you are setting your benchmark very high, you are doing a great job at whatever you do, you, you, you take it to the next level. Because you become a subject matter expert, then you cultivate your soft skills, you have your networking done in the organization. Slowly you will progress on uh, career uh, sooner. And the idea is always have edges, always have the extra things in hand. Um, if you are working somewhere, if you see that the L&D programs are not catered to what you are line of interest is, you should learn something which you are interested in so that you can apply it to your business uh, practices later. And more importantly is I think that the key ingredient I would say is passion. You should be passionate about what you do. Uh, it, it could be a smallest possible job uh, like uh, cutting grass uh, to building a spaceship. If you are not passionate, nothing will, no amount of money will work. And I go back to the aircraft example. Wilbur Wright and Marvel Wright, they had no funding. They used their own resources. They used to run a bicycle, bicycle store. Uh, they were able to make an aircraft fly. But there was a competing guy uh, who had US government funding in those days. He had a funding of more than half a million dollars. He had the best brains at his disposal. Uh, people from Yale, MIT and Harvard were assisting him to build a plane. And he was commissioned by the government of America to build an aircraft. You know what? The day Wilder and Orville Wright rode, they built their first plane and flew the plane, he quit. The reason was, these guys were passionate about building an aircraft. He was hired to build an aircraft. So that is the determining factor between success and failure, usually in most cases. If you are passionate about something, you will definitely get to it. If you are not passionate about it, you are doing it already with half-heartedly. So, you will not be able to carry it for long. You will drop it at some point. And that is why success is not assured when you are not passionate. If you are passionate, definitely success will come to you. So keep the passion. You know, you, you guys are all uh, already one of the best because you are the cream which has been taken out with a lot of uh, careful calculations and tests and which has been applied to you. You are going through a lot of rigor in terms of uh, studying very well. Uh, actually, you know, I think that Hebrew proverb very comes true to all of you. If you want to realize your dreams, then don't sleep. So you guys don't sleep, you are spending a lot of sleepless nights. Keep this passion going. I think that's a good thing for you guys to succeed. And sir, so how was your experience at I think you guys have, uh, you, you guys have drowned us all in your hospitality. Um, I think uh, the team has uh, done a phenomenal job. Uh, most of my co-speakers who have come have great words to speak about you and I'm, personally I am like very indebted because you have taken care of us to the last minute detail. Uh, we have felt as if uh, uh, we have been uh, invited into something, into the hallowed halls of IBM, uh, IAM and uh, we have been taken care with so much care and privilege. I think it's really an honor and you guys have done a phenomenal job. Uh, I don't think I have seen any institution so far to take care of the last, take care to the nth detail, to the full stop, to the comma, everything is perfect. Um, I wish you and your teams very all the best and I hope you continue this tradition in years to come so that you are, you have set up a template. I am uh, scared for your juniors because they should be able to rise to the expectation and deliver better than this because expectations have already been set so high. So all the best to them and great job to you. Thank you very much.